Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Um, we got our first problem. So, if you saw in my uh, my first start video, I thought I fixed my oil leak, which was coming out of the the sending unit on that plate. Um, the oil leaks have just gotten worse, and it's literally leaking from everywhere. From that, everything that has to do with that oil plate is leaking, and I checked it with. A gauge here I'm getting 35 psi out of idle and like a hundred and thirty at uh, like 2 or 2500 rpm so I'm thinking it's something to do with that pressure relief valve so the stock housing has a pressure relief valve it actually has two of them one opens at like 160 which is like in order to save the motor on a catastrophic blockage and one of them is to kind of regulate the pressure and opens at like 60 psi. Um, and obviously, obviously with that plate we don't have one. Um, so I think that's what's causing all my leaks. It's just way too high a pressure and it's literally leaking out of everything. Even my oil filter's leaking. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rip this plate off and I'm going to see if I can fit that. I know that cooler doesn't fit very well. Um, it was hitting on the motor mount plate. So what I'm thinking is I can cut the tab off of that plate and weld on some more another tab somewhere else on that mount to get another bolt on that plate. And I could I could probably fit that stock cooler back in. So I'm gonna rip that plate off and uh see how see how it would be getting a uh getting the stock one back in there so all right we got the uh filter set up in and that fits but the uh oil cooler is what was hitting so if you can see here with that cooler on the bottom of that it's hitting this tab on that motor mount so i'm going to cut that off and I'm gonna have to figure out another way to put a bolt through this side. Probably just weld on another tab on the top, possibly. Um, I will figure something out there. All right, we got uh, most of that other oil system off. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna jack this side of the motor up, pull this mount off, and I'm gonna cut the mount off the frame, and then I'm gonna see if I can just bend that tab down and bolt it back into the mount instead of welding some new tabs on to that mount so I'm gonna get that motor mount off and uh, figure out what I can do there and I'll show you guys what I end up doing got the chain hooked up so I'm ready to pull that mount off hopefully I don't have to go too high which I, I shouldn't have to but you got to get that stud out of the out of the mount on the engine so we'll jack this thing up get that mount off and then we can figure out what all we need to cut well I know we need to cut the whole tab off but I'll show you guys you probably can't see it's kind of dark and then I'll show you guys what I'm talking about when I get that mount off So here's the mount and it's hitting on one of these tabs here. So what I'm thinking is I'm going to cut the mount, cut the tab off the frame and if I can bend that down I can bolt that through the original mount on the frame and that will give me plenty of clearance so let's try that out. Alright pulled the shock off so I get in here a little better. So I'm going to cut along this right here just basically cut this tab off and then I can either I can either try to bend this down or I it's pretty thick I don't know if I'll be able to I might just uh, get another plate and weld it weld it on and then we can bolt it on on the side here instead of on top and that'll give us plenty of clearance for that cooler so I'm gonna snip that off and uh, see what we can figure out there Alright guys, that mount is off. 
if you can see that. So I just cut right along next to that weld. Um, I didn't really want to cut that weld off, so we might have to do a little something special with that mount to get it to bolt on the side here, but we'll figure that out. So I'm going to put that cooler back in and uh, make sure everything clears just fine, and then we can get to fixing that motor mount. All right, guys, there it is. So we got about a half inch of clearance between the mount and then about a half inch this way between that frame so that should be plenty and plenty of clearance Alright guys, so what I got, <clears throat> I built this plate and I, it notches out for this weld around here. So that's going to go just like that. And then I got another little plate here that's going to go in the back side of it because there's that gap where this weld is. So I'm going to tack this on like that. We can get it up in here and then I'll tack it onto the onto the mount and then cut this cut this uh, tab off the mount weld everything up and we should be good to go and then just drill a hole and we're going to put a bolt this way all right here's the uh, mount finished up so i'm really hoping this thing actually holds together it's kind of cracked it's the original the original mount from 91 so I really really hope that it holds together because I don't feel like rebuilding that so let's get this thing on and we can get that that, that stock cooler and filter set up in there and see how everything works alright we're back to modding more shit out <clears throat> so the driver's side mount on these things is the mount that receives basically all the the lift from the torque so when the motor torques it'll lift this way and that's probably why this is already separating and I know for a fact it's gonna completely fall apart in short matter once I get the thing running so I was on Marlin crawler or I seen a post from Marlin crawler and they actually take they cut the stud off they drill a hole through where that stud originally went and you put a bolt through and that bolt you extend out the same length and it keeps the mount from separating um, and it strengthens it a lot so the biggest problem with I was gonna buy like the uh, trail gear mounts the be the big beefy ones and those things are from what I read they vibrate like I'm crazy so and this thing already with the diesel it vibrates not super bad but definitely not like a stock vehicle would so I don't want to get any more vibrations and this shouldn't add too much vibration maybe a little bit but it basically just just prevents that mount from separating so that's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna cut the stud off drill it all the way through and then I have this bolt right here that is going to stick through and I'll probably tack it on the back side here and there actually is a hole in the mount on the frame here so that bolt is not going to be a problem so let's get uh, cut that off and drill a hole through this thing alright so I'll leave just a little bit on top of that so you can center punch it and then so you can make sure that hole is where it should be so I'm gonna punch that throw it in the drill press and hopefully it drills through that rubber all right Alright, there it is. So, bolt through the back side. I'm going to tack that on. 
and then we got a stud just like factory and then they also what they do is they put a big fat nylon washer um, underneath the nut <clears throat> on this side and that helps keep the vibration from running right through the bolt into the frame so I can run to the store grab a washer for that but for now I'm gonna see if it fits it should I don't know why it wouldn't Alright, we got that motor mount <clears throat> all together, good to go. So that works out pretty good. So now I just got the, um, got this all cleaned up, so I'm going to throw that on. And also got new seals <clears throat> for the cooler. So let's get this on and I also got my gasket, don't forget that. And uh, we'll get this on and make sure everything clears, which it should. The only thing I'm worried about is my pressure switch, which I need an adapter for. So it's a 10 mil, to, and this is an eighth inch pipe thread. So I got the adapter. I'm hoping that it's going to fit. I haven't tried it yet, so I'm praying that it uh, will fit in there. And I got two ports. You can use either one of these. will give you oil pressure. So we'll get this on and see how everything fits. Alright boys, we got her on. That uh, oil pressure sander fits, but barely. It's basically touching this mount. But, <clears throat> it fits, so we're good there. Um, oil cooler fits pretty good. Uh, there's that bolt. Let's see if I can get it over here. Yeah, it's right there. There's that bolt there for that mount which is pretty close but this cooler rotates so I kind of move it out of the way a little bit um, something like that give that quarter inch room or something should be good so I just need to hook up my lines up back up to the stock the stock uh, uh, water rail whatever you call it get that on and then uh, we could actually see if this thing works and then I, I still need to go pull all this off the rest of that oil system and the good thing is I can move my radiator back to the stock location so that'll give me more clearance here and <clears throat> just look a little cleaner and I actually like the look of this I mean not that that's good looking at all but um, it's better than having lines everywhere um, and this is a it's a known good working system so and it's all contained right here so I'm glad I went this route and shouldn't have any any more issues with it so let me get these lines hooked up get everything else buttoned up and uh, we can see if this thing works alright guys got this thing ready to go so um, let's fire it up and see what we got for oil pressure um, another couple things I had to do I had to reroute the lower radiator hose because the filter was obviously in the way then I moved my radiator back to the stock location, had to remount that, got all the cooler, thermostat, everything ripped off. So, and then now I, I have my, <clears throat> that external gauge hooked up to the filter housing where I'm putting my ascending unit. So we can uh, check the oil pressure that way. So let's fire this thing up and see what, see what happens. We'll see what she does, boys. So obviously the oil's way cold right now. So that's pretty high, but I guess we'll see what it does. Guys, got her mostly warmed up, and we're at just under 30 at an idle, and then at 2,000 RPM. We're at about 60, and then and it doesn't go much above 80, which that should be good. Um, and we ain't got no leaks. 
seems to be running actually quieter for some reason. There we go guys, got it all fixed up, oil pressure's good, uh, we have no leaks, and so it should be good to go. So we're on track to the first drive, this is a little setback, but got it fixed up. Thanks for watching, subscribe, like, thumbs up, all that good stuff. See ya!